hello everybody i'm gonna just uh break down the song that you heard in the on the intro and i'm gonna break it down piece by piece what i've done with the guitars what i use for the guitars for the bass drums and pretty much everything including the reverbs and what's going on on my on my master track and such so i'm gonna use a combination of free plugins that are included with reaper for example i have recomp on vocals here i have the reaper stock delay for my vocal delays and i'm pretty much i'm sure i'm using, I'm using the real limit on my master track to just uh prevent clipping the master overall and just to have a louder mix so on youtube it sounds nice and loud all right let's uh talk about the plugins and the stuff you can use to get the tones that i've been getting out of this project uh, some of the plugins that i found over the internet that i think are pretty good uh, some of them i have experience with like the empty uh power drum kit I've been using this for quite a while now, actually. Uh, not 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 as my main drum sound, but you know, it's it's a fun thing to have. It's completely free, and uh, some of them I'm uh, completely new to them. Uh, for example, I never used this uh, TDR compressor. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about it, but I never used it until now. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. So. I'm going to leave all the download links below uh, so you can get this uh, stuff for yourself. So this is the compressor that I was talking about. This is the compressor that I'm using on the master bus. This is the EQ that you will be seeing pretty much everywhere in the track. This is the amp that I'm using, the Audiority L12X, which is pretty decent, I must say. You have to tweak it, though. Another alternative to this, it's the Cypress TT. 15 which is a tiny terror emulation it's pretty good i must say i don't have it here i don't have it installed on this system unfortunately to show you it's also pretty decent on bass if you crank the gain can we just zoom in if you crank the gain on this amp and pretty much leave the volume halfway and crank the tone you get some pretty decent cold sounding black metal tones also there is the ml sound lab amp uh, roots just completely free as well this is this is a little bit more modern sounding so you might not like it for black metal but yeah also there's the blue cat audio the free guitar amp same thingy this is pretty great i'm using it on the uh, for the for, for the intro which is completely clean but the downside is it doesn't have any uh, cabinet simulation so you have to get irs for it which is not a big deal, honestly. You can uh, load the IRs directly onto it. So if you're going to use it, you can, you know, just uh, with, with this drop down menu, just, you know, load your own IRs and you would be good to go. But keep in mind, out of the box, it doesn't have any IRs. And so, you know, with, if you're using the modern drive, for example, you don't get that, uh, get that cap simulation and it sounds like ass. So keep, just keep that in mind. And what next? Uh, yeah, this is the empty power drum kit that we are using today. I just talked about it. You can get it from this link. And for chorus, for the clean sound on the intro chorus, I'm using uh, this TAL chorus plugin, which is pretty decent. And oh, for the reverb, we are using the Valhalla Supermassive. It's, again, completely free, unlike the other ones that are included. And it's probably one of the best free reverbs out there. And lastly, I, I think the the best free one you can get, but the best free plugin in my opinion is just this tape. It's it's really better than the paid versions of uh, tape emulation that I'm using, and it's we will get to that for we will get to this plugin later on. So yeah, let's just uh, start with the guitars. So yeah, as I said, I'm using the L12X for the guitars. I'm pretty much not using any tube skimmer in front or anything like that. I'm just, I just dialed it in till it sounded good. I'm using the built-in cap simulation, which many people uh, vote against it, honestly. They don't really like cap, uh, the default cap simulations that come with many amplifiers, but I'm fine with it. I'm not using this EQ, it's just bypassed. 
So yeah, this is uh, this is uh, the setting that I'm using for the both left and right rhythm guitars. Pretty much exactly the same. Then I have a master uh, guitar, which is these two tracks that are the main rhythm guitars are going to. And on that, I have this Nova EQ. I am basically getting rid of all of the nasty low end. I am cutting around one six seven, boosting around. Uh, this <laughs> cutting this and again boosting like that and cutting a lot of high uh, high frequencies out so let's just uh, listen to how the guitar sound without any reverb and process processing and such this is with the uh Nova EQ engaged, this is without it. It sounds super meaty and super heavy without it, I know, but it doesn't sit quite right in the mix. And you have to consider that you don't have to, you don't actually have to EQ the guitars till it sounds good on its own. You have to basically make it work in a mix. So that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm that's why I'm using this EQ. Next up, I guess, would be the reverb sound that I'm actually using, which is the Walhalla Supermassive, which um, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult plugin to get your head around to. It's, uh, it sounds kind of glitchy and weird at times, but if you use the presets like I'm using right now, you can get some super great delay and reverb sounds out of it. So if you just listen to the guitars going into the reverb, So good. So what I'm doing is basically I have a master reverb here that I have the tracks uh, going into it, basically sending volume into it. As you can see, I have my drums going, I have my uh, guitars, a clean and vocals. I, I'm also sending this delay into the reverb because I don't want the delay to be dry. Uh, next up, I guess uh, we will talk about the clean tone. It's pretty basic. I have this uh, this compressor that you will see a lot actually in this track, uh, just to keep the dynamics and uh, basically to keep the dynamics intact. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Also using the uh, Blue Cats free amp that I was just talking about. And then I, after that, I have another Novo EQ. Again, you will see this EQ a lot. To just get rid of those, those nasty low end, and just boost boost some high end. Not not particularly so much processing going on. It's just a little bit of you know tone shaping. You can hear you can hear definitely with it. It just cleans things up, nice and good. Lastly, we have the TAL chorus that we just talked about again. Right, uh, let's get into the bass. For the bass, I'm using a four string grassroots bass with uh, two humbuckers, and I'm using the both pickups for this sound. And uh, I'm already compressing it on the way in. As you can see, the waveforms are pretty compressed and condemned, condensed. So, you know, you don't need to, so I don't need to use a compressor to further control the dynamics. But if you're recording bass DI, you probably need to have some sort of a compressor on the, on the bass to keep those, uh, to keep the low end intact and keep the dynamics pretty, pretty nice and intact again i'm not using any compressor here because i'm already compressing and i'm actually not using this bod bass overdrive here for the track i'm just using the bass as it is di just putting some little bit of eq on it to just make the low end pop more <laughs>
not a lot of uh, processing, just 7 dB of low boost, which is might be a lot to some people, but it's fine to me. So the reason I have this TSA audio BOD bass overdrive here to just to show you if you want a little bit more dirtier distorted bass tones, you can use this. This is pretty good. Also completely free. You can get it from tsaaudio.com. Also they have like a tube screamer, like a rat and the bass overdrive, which you can get. I'm I I, I will be using this on uh on my vocals actually. We will get to that a little bit later. And so yeah, this is what the bass sounds with the overdrive. Yeah, so if you want that sort of distorted, uber distorted bass tone, you can use this. And I guess lastly, we will just go to the drums, then the vocals. Yeah, for the drums, uh, I'm using the empty power kit. I'm basically using what, what comes stock with it. I, I just basically lowered the massive volume and increased the level of the crashes and the cymbals and such. And I'm using the <laughs> infamous compressor that it's, we, I, th I think it's the second time we're seeing it now. And I'm using this on drums as well. And I'm p hitting the compressor pretty hard. And uh, the reason why I'm pushing the compressor this hard is to basically get that extreme compressed sound so I can blend it in with the drums. Bas lastly, on the drums, I have just a touch a bit of low end boost on uh, 68 hertz. That's what I usually boost on drums because I just want to hear that thump of the thump of the kick. Yeah, I'm just ton 2 dB of volume boost on the on that frequency. Nothing too crazy. Lastly, the vocals. Um, the vocals are before we get into what I'm using on on it. I am sending it into the master reverb, which was here that had Valhalla super massive on it. Then I'm also sending it into a separate delay track, which is. I showed in the beginning of the video, it's the Reaper's stock delay. And I'm basically doing 100% wet, no dry, and I'm filtering out the, sig the delay signal, and, I'm have a and I have a decent amount of feedback on it, and it's basically, uh, what's it, what, it, what is it called, single notes, the, the black ones, yeah, that. It's doing that in the timing. And also sending the delay back into the, uh, sorry, sending the delay back into the master reverb too. <clears throat> so the delays get reverberated as well. Just uh, let's take a listen to it. Yeah, pretty nice and uh, wet in terms of reverb and delay. Firstly, I'm using a short SM58 microphone like I'm using right now for my vocals. And um, I'm cutting a lot of shit out of this microphone because this is a really not a high fidelity microphone. It's pretty boomy, pretty low sounding. So it doesn't have a lot of high end. So I'm cutting a lot of things out. For example, I'm high shelving, high passing at 2.5, cutting like 5 dB out of 300 and cutting 6 dB, almost 6 dB out of 500 to make it super bright and super i guess more responsive if you can say and i'm boosting like wow 10 db of 10k and above which is a lot but you know this mic really needs it so I'm, i was talking about parallel compression compressing now we get into serial compressing so on the second uh, second of the chain, I have the recomp, and I add, and immediately after that, I have the famous TDR compressor. And the reason is, I just want the vocals to be su slammed super hard and super under control. Just yeah, let's take a listen. <laughs> Stony 
side, 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 side. As you can see, the second compressor get it, it's getting like 10 dB of compression and the first one is doing like 8. And that really, again, helps compared to if you have just one. And yeah, lastly, I just have a tube screamer, just a good old tube screamer. Just instead of on a guitar, I'm just using it on the, on the vocals. And the reason why is there are plenty of people that I've seen that been using tube screamers on vocals, especially for extreme metal. So the only free distortion plugin that I had on my arsenal was this one, which again is from TSC Audio. So yeah, I think it sounded pretty great on the vocals and it really made it come and it really made it come to life, honestly. Just take a listen to it. Lastly, I just want to talk about if you want that lo-fi black metal sound, what, what you can do is to get this tape machine or any sort of a tape machine that you have in your arsenal would do it. But I especially like this one because it actually sounds better than the paid versions of the famous t tape machines. What I'm doing now is I'm engaging some filters. I'm just low cutting and high cutting to get that lo-fi black metal sound and I'm driving it pretty hard as you can see. Saturation all the way up, drive all the way up and I'm pretty much uh, putting a lot of gain going into the uh, tape, com uh, t tape machine. So just take a listen with and without it. Yeah, I think that sounds very decent, actually. I'm going to talk about this plugin that from TDR again, that I cannot <laughs> read the name of it. I don't know what it's called, caught, whatever. And I think it's decent. I, I'm i pretty much used to using SSO type compress compressors on my master track to just, you know, give it a little bit more glue, a little bit more bloom, if you want to call it that. but this does the job fine, honestly, and I think it sounds decent, and it's I think it's compressing like 2 dB. Yeah, it's just compressing a little bit, giving that, giving you that glue that you need for your mixes to sound good. Without it, honestly, you cannot really hear the difference that much because I'm boosting the volume a lot when it's engaged so it's not fair but yeah you get the point if you want a if you want a decent compressor for your master bus get this and now lastly yeah again i'm using reaper's own built-in limiter to just as a limiter basically so my master doesn't clip And yeah, that's the pretty much the whole process of the intro song, what I use, what I've done. It's pretty simple, not a lot of things happening. And I think, in my opinion, it sounds decent, especially since I'm using completely free plugins. And yeah, let me know what you think about this video. Sorry if it was a little bit long and tedious. And thanks. Like and comment for future video ideas and such. Thanks.